Hi, welcome once again to Coastwide Church Victory Bible Studies. Really great to have you with us once again. And I uh, know that uh, last Tuesday night, as we shared about becoming God inside conscious, that, uh, that there were some tremendous things that the Spirit of God spoke. And, uh, and I know that it challenged you, and I know that it's bringing you to another level. So tonight, uh, we're going to recap for just a moment, and then we're going to go on with this understanding and bringing revelation from the Word about uh, the importance of us understanding that God by His Spirit lives on the inside of us. To me, it's just the greatest truth. There's a lot of great truths in the Bible, of course. But to me, I think to understand that God lives in me by His Spirit, to me, was an absolute life-transforming revelation. To understand that, that when I was preaching the gospel, I was allowing the Spirit of God in me to speak through me. That, that when I went to lay my hands on the sick, that the hands of Jesus were in my hands and that it was not just me laying my hands on him, but it was Jesus through me laying hands on him. What a great truth. And so in the Old Testament, they had an understanding that God was with them. They had an understanding that God was for them. And then the Holy Ghost would come and anoint people for specific tasks. And so they understood that. And from them understanding those two things, that God was for them and God was with them, they won great battles. Yes. They won tremendous battles against many enemies that would come their way. And so now us in the New Testament, we understand that God is for us. Yeah. We understand that God is with us. But now there's a third part, and that is that God is in us. And to me, this, this is just exciting. Because to understand God's for me, yeah, I, I, I like that. That God's with me, mm -hmm. yeah. But God is in me. That I don't have to reach him out there somewhere in heaven. But God lives on the inside, inside. of me. Every answer I need for every problem I face is in me. Glory to God. Mm. And so let's go on. So in order to live this victorious Christian life, we must have a revelation of God's desire for us to have his ability. Now some people will be going, well, you didn't even pray before this session. That's okay. We've prayed. We need to understand that, that God's desire, <coughs> excuse me, is for us to have his ability, for us to live in his ability, not to be trying to do things ourselves, not trying to love people by our own ability, not trying to live peaceably by our own ability, not trying to have victories by our own ability but to do everything by his ability on the inside of us. There should never be any area in the life of a believer that finds him without God's ability and without the understanding that God is watching over him and meeting his every need in crisis. There should never come a point with us that we... Allow a thought, is God really with me? Is God really for me? Is God really in me? Because this Bible says that he is. Yes. And this is the only assurance that we need. We don't need any other assurance whatsoever. We just need what the word of God says to us. And about us. And believe that. And then we let God work and do what 
he wants to do in us and through us. So in John chapter 1 and verse 16, this is what it says. And of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. Yeah. Think about that. Of his fullness. I, I, I know some people pray this way. God, more of you. God, I need more of you. And many, 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 many years ago, we realised this truth, that we have all of God on the inside of us. So for us to be praying, God, more of you, where's he going to get more of him? If, if I came uh, to your house and I spent time in your house with you, and you said, oh, gee, Shane, I, I, wish, I wish there was just more of you here. I would look at you with a weird look and go, but, but I'm here. My head's here. My arms are here. My torso's here. My legs are here. My feet. I'm, I'm here in my fullness. And that's what God is saying to us. He's saying that of his fullness we have received. We have received his fullness. We've received his ability, his power, his presence, his goodness. We've received of his fullness on the inside of us. So for Christians to be praying, God, more of you, is a prayer that God can't answer. Hmm. He, uh, uh, listen to this. this, this will help some of you. He never gave an angel to us to live on the inside of us. He gave himself. Yes. He gave the very best that he had himself. He would not leave us up to an angel. Angels are there to minister for us, according to Hebrews. Absolutely. But he never left us up to angels. He said, no, I need to come and dwell in you and bring my fullness in you. Now, a good prayer to be praying would be this. God, teach me how to manifest and how to release more of you in my life. Not God, I need more of you, but teach me how to release more of you in my life. How to release your ability, your anointing, your love, your goodness, your kindness. How, how do I release that fullness of you, the fullness of your kindness, the fullness of your love, the fullness of your peace, how do I release that and manifest that to people mm. wherever I am? Yep. That's a much better prayer. Yes. That's a prayer that God can answer. Yep. Yep. But not the one, God, I need more of you. Because did you only get um, an arm of God? Did you only get... A leg of God when you were born again. No, friend, you got God. You got all of him. We have all received that. Then in Colossians 2, chapter 9 and verse 10, would you like to read that again? Okay. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principalities and power. Yeah. So he's saying this. In Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you, us, we are complete yep. in him. Yes. Of his fullness we've received. Now he's saying you are complete, complete. in him. You know, there's not... Anything that we need in life that we don't have. But our issue is releasing that flow. Re releasing that flow of the completeness of God in us. Yeah. So, God, 
The Father is in Jesus, Jesus in us. What a powerful thing. Yes. That, that we have, we have received the fullness, John 1, 16. Now in Colossians it says, and you are complete in him. Who is the head of all principalities and power. So think about that. Jesus has become the head of all principality. Every principality, every power, rule of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, all of these, these areas that it talks about in the book of Ephesians. It says that Jesus is the head over them. He's, he has authority, he has the rulership over them. And if he does, we do. Yes. Oh, definitely we do, yeah. If he does, we, we do. do. You've got to believe that. If he does, we do. He's the head of all power. The ultimate power is in Jesus Christ. My goodness. Mm. And he lives in here. Yes. Yep. By his spirit. Yes. So we have the power of the Godhead living on the inside of us. But the key is learning to release it. It says in the Gospel of John, it says that, that in our innermost being, there are rivers, rivers, plural, rivers of living water. Thus he spoke concerning the Spirit. So the Spirit in us... There are rivers, talking about different streams, there are different rivers. It could be a river of healing, a river of financial breakthrough, a river, uh, a river, what did I say, a river? A river, a river, I'm saying a Korean soul, a liver in you, a river in you of, of miracles. So there, there are rivers of the Spirit in us but we've got to learn to open our heart, open our innermost being to allow those rivers to flow. Mm. It's like upstream. You can have massive downfall of rain and that rain comes downstream and it fills the dam up. And it fills the dam up until it's getting dangerously high. And so the workmen come along and they open the spillway, they open the dam walls and they open that up to allow the pressure of that water behind it to flow out. Hmm. And, and I see that like, like that in our inner being. We've got, we've got these, these gates in there that by faith we learn to open those gates of our inner being and as we do, there are rivers of healing, rivers of finances, rivers of uh, miracles, rivers of peace flowing out of us, mm -hmm. touching the hearts and the lives and the minds of people. Yeah. And so I don't have to go looking somewhere for the healing power of God. I have to be conscious and aware that there's a river of the Holy Ghost in me, waiting to flow out of me. He's saying this, we're complete in him. We, we've all received this fullness. So, so the completeness, every miracle, every healing, every, every wonder of God is on the inside of me in the spirit wanting to flow out of me. Glory to God. Wow. Wow. Well, I've just preached myself happy. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> well, the rivers of living water, and a, a living water is a moving river. It's flowing, it's fresh, it's not still, and it's not stagnant. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's got to be moving. Rivers of life, it life. brings life. Yep, yep. So, what does that say? It says if someone is dead spiritually, there's a river that wants to flow out of you to bring life, to bring salvation to that person. Hmm. If a person is sick, there's a river of healing 
that wants to flow out of you to bring healing to that person. Yes, yeah. yeah. If a person is feeling uh, discouraged and depressed, there's a river of the Holy Ghost wanting to flow out of you to bring peace and joy to that person. That's right. Yep. It's all in him. It's all in, it's in us. Yep. And that's why we've got to become God inside conscious, conscious of that truth. See, once you invite the Holy Spirit to make his uh, abode in you, then we should immediately begin to develop this God inside consciousness. He's as close to us as our very breath. He's right there, living on the inside of us. Wherever we go, he goes with us. Mm. We never have to pray this way. This is another one of those more of you God kind of prayers. I hear people pray this. God be with me. I'm going to travel somewhere. And I pray, oh God, God that you would be with me. Like, where has he gone? Mm. Has he gone for lunch? Mm. Has he gone to have a nap? Maybe he's gone on holidays. Mm. And so we're praying this prayer, God be with me. When the Bible says this, I'll never leave you. Nor will I ever forsake you. So if he never leaves us, to me that's another one of those kind of prayers that, that just are not going to be answered because he can't. How, how can God answer a prayer, God be with me? How can he answer that except to say, well, uh, I am. I, mm. I haven't left you. Mm. I'm there. Hello, I'm there. You hear this inner voice coming up. I'm here. Haven't left you. So we, we, we often pray these prayers that just God can't answer. Because they're not in line with the word of God in any way. Here's another one. People say, oh, take care. I, I don't say this out loud anymore. I have. But now what I do is in my spirit I go, no, no, I'm not going to take care because I learned to roll all of my cares over onto him because he cares for me. And so if I'm going to take care, Jesus can't take it. Mm. I've, got to, I've got to give him my care because this is what he says when I give him my care. Thank you. I know how to handle that. So I don't take care. People tell me to take care. I just smile, walk away, saying to myself, no, I refuse to take care. I, no, I roll all of my care over onto him because he cares for me. And so people now say, have you got any problems? you got any cares or worries? And I go, no, no, I don't. Why? Am I lying? No. Because I have rolled them all over onto him. And so if I've given them to him, I don't have them don't anymore. Have them yep. I could take my Bible and I could give my Bible to Susan. I say, there you go, that's yours. Okay. I don't have it any longer. It's not mine anymore. Now I can take it back from her. Sure. And the same with cares. If this is my cares... I give them to Jesus, now he's got them. Now I can take them back if I want to. But why would you want to? Because he's got the answer that can solve all of that issue if you will just give it to him and leave it with him. Tremendous right. stuff. Right. Really tremendous. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16, he says this, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Again, think about this verse. We are the temple of God. What is a temple? 
It's a dwelling place. It's a housing. It's a, it's a building. It's a place where people come and dwell in. So he's saying this, that you are the temple of the living God. I'm, I'm glad he said living because that really specifies who we're talking about. Because people call Buddha and Muhammad and, and Krishna and all these other crazy ones, they're calling them gods. But they're all dead. Mm. They're dead, they're buried. They're a bit like someone said to Jesus about Lazarus, they stinketh. And they do. They stinketh. Although probably by now there's nothing left to stink with them. But they're dead. But we, we are the temple. We are the dwelling place of the living God. As God has said, as this living God has said, I, I, not an angel, not, not someone else, but he's saying, I will dwell in them and walk oh, among man. them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. One of the things I think often is we read Scripture and we don't stop and think about it enough. Oftentimes you will, you'll find this word sila, especially over in, like in the Psalms and so on, it says sila. And the word sila means this, stop and think about it. Stop and think about it. So we need to stop and think about this, that God says, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. I'll be their God. I'll dwell in them. I have the answers to everything they need. I have the way out. It says in Corinthians, that there's nothing befallen a man that God has not made a way out of. He, he, he always knows the way out. And the answer to that is on the inside of us, in his spirit, by his spirit. So we're being conscious and we're being aware of that truth. And when you're aware of that truth, how can you be defeated? You'll never be defeated. You'll never give up. Because you know God is for me, God is with me, and now God is in me. Tremendous truth. And as we develop this God inside consciousness, or, or I could use the word awareness, we begin to become aware that we are linked up with God the Father. Oh, listen to this. It builds in us a, an, a consciousness or awareness that we are linked or, or we are connected with God the Father. And, and that creates on the inside of us a, a superiority kind of a thinking. Not, not, a, not an arrogant kind of thinking. Well, look at me. No, 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 no. No, it builds a superiority kind of thinking that together with God, it's not like, well, I'm full of God. Here is, here is the answer that you've always been asking the question for. No, it's not that. Mm. It's I am coming with great humility. I humble myself under the hand of God, but I also understand that me and God are a majority. Yes. Or I should say it this way, God and I are a majority because without him, I'm really, really quite useless. Without his anointing, his ability, I'm really quite useless. But thank God, I'm not without him. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not without him. And so it creates in us this, this sense of of superiority that, that every devil, every situation that tries to come to destroy me, 
I'm superior over that because I'm with God and God's with me. I like that thought. Mm. Mm. Who are you with? God. God. Mm. God. You know, in the olden days, uh, a, 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 a salesman would go to a business and, and they'd say, who are you with? And say, oh, I'm with TNT or I'm with IBM or I'm, I'm, I'm with this insurance company or something like that. They'd say, that's who I'm with. So people say to me, who are you with? God. <laughs> me and God. I hang around with him and he hangs around with me. How cool is that? So Paul, he, he had this awareness. And just in our last few minutes, I, I want us to read Philippians chapter 4. We're going to read verses 11 through to 13, but we're going to read it from the Amplified Classic Version. Would you like to read that? Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So it, it didn't matter what Paul was going through. He knew God was for him, with him and in him. Yes. And, and so that's what Paul is saying. He's saying, listen, doesn't matter what's going on around me. I could be hungry. I could be having trouble with accommodation. I could I, just all of these problems that I'm carrying with the church and everything else. He said in all of those things, he said this, I have learned to be content. Because he understands who's for him, with him, and in him. Yeah. And he makes this statement. He says this, I can do all things through Christ, Christ who strengthens me. I can do it all. I can do all things. I can go through anything and come out the other side victorious. Doesn't matter what you throw against me because I'm still going to come out victorious because I understand that Christ in me is strengthening me. Making me strong. And when you get the revelation, the, the understanding of that truth in you, you'll be like Paul. No, I'm content. I know everything's going to work out all right. It might look pretty much like a tragedy at the moment, but it's not going to stay a tragedy because I, I know God's with me. Yeah. God's in me. God's for me. My goodness me. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed last Tuesday night and, and again tonight, Thursday night. And, uh, and, and, and at least next Tuesday night, I want to cover a little bit more in this because I believe it's a really, really important revelation that you need to get that God is in you. and Be conscious of that truth that God, becoming God inside, not looking out there somewhere, but just stopping and being aware, God, God, you're in me. God, you're in me. The breakthrough I need is in me. It's there. It's there. Would you like to pray as we close tonight? Father, I just thank you for our partners and, and our friends that watch online. Father, I thank you for your anointing and your revelation, the power of your word, the power of realizing that, that Christ, the anointed one and his anointing is in us. Therefore, God is in us and that we can have uh, develop a stronger understanding of that consciousness of God in us. The anointed one and his anointing is in us. So we could say the same as Paul, that, that um, it's the anointed one and his anointing that, that strengthens me. Therefore, I can do all things through that anointing. And we just thank you and praise you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank Amen. You. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory and praise. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great rest of your night. And I look forward to seeing you either on Sunday morning or again on Tuesday. God bless you. We truly love you. Enjoy. Amen.